show for white man. For what is that to us, man? We forgot to some, some coons, man. It ain't to hate your fucking um, your oppressor. Y'all shall be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Yeah, man, because the so-called white man is being exposed, man, for his nakedness, man. Well, everybody knows the so-called white man is a is a faggot, and everybody knows his woman is a lesbian, man. And all everybody know that all these um, Hillary Clinton is a uh, is a dyke, man. So the so-called white man is being ex exposed to all the whole world, man. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. Yeah, our, our, our punishment is accomplished, man. We are no longer in, um, in hardcore slavery no more, man. Our punishment is, 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 we could actually go home, man. You know, getting whipped or back whip, whips, man. We ain't got no chains in our hands or yoke of iron or a on our neck, man. But we are meant to slavery. But the Lord said they don't want he took to, away the hardcore slavery from us, man. He's a fucking doctor. Yeah. They say oh, daughter doctor. of Zion, he will no more carry thee away in the captivity. Yeah, he so the Lord made a promise, man, to the nation of Israel will never go into captivity again, man. Never. Because the Lord, when America has been, been destroyed, I mean, in the, in, the, um, in the kingdom of heaven, man, the law is going to be in our inward minds, man. So we ain't going to go into captivity no more, man. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will destroy thy sin. Yeah, so the Lord is going to... Okay. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. Yeah, the Lord is going to discover... The, you know, everybody's on. Um, the Lord is already discovering the, the sins of the sober white man. Even if you look at his Catholic priests, man. They, they're the only one that ripping this little voice, man. Ain't nobody gonna say shit about it, man. That, that's a sin only a, a, a evil person will do, man. Say you're a man of the Lord and you're popping little boys, man. So that's the sin of the so-called white man that's being revealed. This is Obadiah 1 and 9. And thy mighty men. Obadiah 1 verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. Yeah, the day of the Lord is near upon all heathens, man. Not only the so-called white man, but all these other nations. You can see that, that the Lord is, is, is getting ready to put his, his, the, the right for people in rulership, man. The kingdom of the nation of Israel. The true rulers of the earth, man, under, under our Lord, Hamashah, man. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Yes, yeah, so everything in nations done unto us, man. We're gonna do unto you, man. Double, man. We split up our family, man. We got our woman as um concubines, man. We are gonna do the same thing to you, man. We're gonna take your family into captivity, man. We're gonna have you paying tribute to us, man. We're gonna bring your best fruits, your best um, livestock onto us, man. We are gonna be ruling over you, man. Righteousness. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, yeah, because everybody, man, all, all the other nation is um, living off of all people, man. But uh, if, if the nation of Israel choose not to work again throughout the whole world, man, this whole world economy will fall, man. So all people, all people like shopping, man. If all people stop shopping, man, the whole economy, the whole world economy is going to crash, man. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, you're going to drink slavery continually, man, continually. For what you did to the Lord people. We wasn't we, we wasn't in slavery for a couple of years, but the so-called white man, these other nations, man, they're gonna be in slavery for generations, man. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. Yeah, they're gonna drink and swallow down slavery, man. And they, they're gonna choke on slavery, man. Because the Lord is gonna put us in our, in our mind for all the wickedness. And the so-called white man did to us, man. The, one, the things we couldn't remember, and what these other nations did to us, man. We're gonna re rem remember that shit, man. When the piss is off, man, we're gonna go we're gonna destroy people for, for what you did to us, man. It's gonna be worse than Roots, man. It's gonna be worse than Mandango. 
It's gonna be worse than goodbye Uncle Tom. It's gonna be worse than 12 years of slave, man. And they shall be as though they had not been. Yeah, because once these nations was one powerful rulers among the earth, man, they're gonna be like nothing, man. Nothing. Man. And we start bringing this, this destruction upon them, man. Can you say something? Backing up what he's saying. The spirit staring up at me. You got this uh, group, uh, James White and uh, Alpha and Omega Ministries, and then you got this Jake that's with them, named, uh, what's the name of his name? Damn, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, uh -huh. William, William Bell. I was calling him Bob William. William, uh, William Bell, he has a, a, a site on YouTube called Eschatology End Time Phil. And basically he's saying that all the scriptures that we read in the book of Revelation and Daniel and Matthew 24, Luke uh, 21, and it's the end of the world is talking about 70 AD. He's saying that 70 AD is the end of the, that's a fulfillment, which part, he's partially right. When you go to the book of Matthew, that's why we got to go over it. And we have going over it. We have said that. We said what he said. There's certain parts in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, that's talking about 70 AD, all right? But there's other parts where it actually talks about the end of the system. Even when you go to the book of Daniel, it talks about 70 AD. Even if you go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you know, you know in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it's talking about 70 AD, right? Let's go to that. Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse uh, uh, 47, uh, 49. Right, you know what I found out? I was doing some research on 70 AD. And during the time of 70 AD, when uh, uh, Titus, the son of Vespasian, besieged uh, Jerusalem under uh, Julius Tiberius Alexander, or, or Tiberius Julius Alexander, however you want to say it, he was a Jake that knew he was an Israelite, but he was down with the, with the Romans. He was actually, he was brought up in a Hebrew Israelite family, but he still was coming against his own people. But he was supposed to be an experienced general. Now during that siege, do you know that there were, the angels came down and UFOs, and they were watching the whole thing. Now when you go into the scriptures, there's a whole, there's a, there's a lot of references to so-called UFOs or the chariots of Israel coming down, man. During the time of King David, when David was fighting a war, I believe it was against the Philistines, because he was always fighting against the Philistines over that plot of land, and there was one battle where the Lord came down and said, look, you don't have to fight. I'm going to send the angels down to fight for you. And they said, when you hear a uh, 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 rustling in the trees, or in the mulberry trees, he said that that means the angels are there. And that's when you attack. And when David went to attack, the angels already attacked the enemy. So there was se several uh, uh, accounts where the angels came down all throughout the scriptures, man. All throughout the scriptures. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Um, and when the angels came down, in them ships, the angels spoke from them ships. They had like a speaker system. And they spoke from them ships. But what was ironic was, what I did was I went to uh, UF, his, uh, a history of UFO sightings. Man, they went into UFO sightings before the Greeks, during the Greek Empire. And I kept searching, and, I, and they mentioned 70 AD. So anytime there was a major event, the so-called UFOs came down. Sometimes they came to attack, or sometimes they just came down and showed themselves. So that's how we know when we get delivered, we know that the, so, the, the, the chariots of Israel is coming coming back to save us, man. What is that, 2 second, uh, second Kings? Uh, is that 2 Second Kings uh, 1 and 12, is it? 2 and 12. 2 and 12, 2 and 12, go to that. Hey, remember Elisha, when he, when, when the, when the, the he opened, the, he opened their eyes, he yeah. opened their eyes. There was, UF, there was so-called UFOs that was invisible, and the servant couldn't see it, but Elijah could see the, uh, the chariots, 
but the servant couldn't see it. And the, and the Most High opened up his eyes and he could see them chariots. There's chariots around us right now. I'm sounding like you shy. There's chariots around us right now. And there's angels around us right now. I told you that in Hebrews 13. Okay? All right, troop, you dismiss. Okay, we're here now. Okay? The apostles are here. I'm not messing with y'all, man. Go ahead. 2 Kings 2 and 12, and Elisha saw it. And Elisha saw it, go ahead. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Jump Israel. up a couple of verses. Um, um, 2 Kings 2 and 9, and it came to pass that when it go over, that Elijah said, Elisha, ask and what shall I do for thee, before I be taken away from a little louder. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let the double, let the double portion of thy spirit be upon thee. And he said, let it double, now, now you heard what Elisha said? Elisha was the understudy of Elijah, all right? He was the next prophet to come in line. So he came up under Elijah. So what he asked for was a double portion of his spirit. You know what that meant? That means the spiritual power that you have I want double that. That's what that meant. The things that you could do, because it tells you Elijah, he, he had spiritual power. He did a lot, he, he had his mantle, which was a cape, and he went across his stream, and what he did was he took the, 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 the cape off and went like that, and the stream parted. So he did a number, he raised the dead, he raised a dead boy. So he had spiritual power. There was a time that he was out there in the wilderness and the Most High used the ravens to feed him. And he drunk, he drunk from a lake. So that was a spiritual man. Now, the way he was as Elijah, he came back the same way as um, when he came, when uh, uh, John the Baptist came on the scene, which is the same individual. Yep. Now, when they saw, when the disciples saw John the Baptist, they kind of looked at, they kind of repulsed at him. Like, he didn't look, he didn't look like much. Like he didn't have a nice suit on, you know, a nice garment on. He, he had like a, actually it tells you that, matter of fact, get the account, Matthew 3. He didn't have a shiny suit. He didn't have no shiny, he had no, he ain't had no purple on with no gold, gold fringes and all that, the crown on his head. So when, when, when Yahweh Shai showed him John the Baptist, he said, that's John the Baptist, man. He's a, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. And the, the apostles are looking at him, that, that's him. But, but, but some of the disciples of Yahweh Shai was, first came on, up under uh, uh, John the Baptist. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, uh, no, was it, no, it wasn't Andrew, it was James, John, yeah. and I believe uh, Peter and Andrew. But I know James and John James was two of his disciples under him, and when he died, they went with Yahweh Shai. They were set up in the spirit. So when they saw him, Yahweh Shai said, what, in other words, he said, what you expect to see? You expect to see somebody that's dressed up like a king? He wasn't going to be dressed up like that. Like if John the Baptist was in the same spirit that he was in back when he was John the Baptist in the day 2,000 years ago, and he was out here teaching, Nate would call him a buck. And he was actually homeless. Yeah. All right? And the people, and the people, well, there were certain people that hated him. You had Israelites that loved him because they knew he was a man of the Lord. Yep. All right, go ahead, Doc. That's why when, um, when, he, when, um, when he was baptizing people, when the, when the wicked Pharisees and them came, he, oh, he cursed them, them out. Yeah. He cursed them out. He cursed them out. Yep, yep. yep. Well, how, how do you say it? Uh, uh, generation of viper or something yep, like that. Yep, who, who, who have uh, uh, warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Right, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? But they were Israelites. They came down to get baptized, and he looked at them and he said, man, you, you guys ain't going to be safe. He was both, so they hated him, man. And then, oh, when they asked him, they looked at him because they knew, the Israelites knew that, uh, they knew that Elijah was going to come back because even the disciples, and we're going to read that, even the disciples at that time said to Yahweh Shai, they said, look, the scribes say that Elijah shall come. They didn't understand what it meant. So the people that was, that was getting baptized around John, they knew that they knew that he was Elijah. They said, this guy got to be Elijah. So they asked him, I said, are you Elijah? You know what he said? He said, no. Why do you think he said no? By a show of hands. Why do you think he said no? 
What is Thank you, brother. That's right. He said no because the most high didn't open up his eyes. Now did Yahweh Shai know that he was Elijah? Yeah, he yeah. Why? Because that's Yahweh Shai. Yeah, he knows all spirits. He 